I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 at 6 p.m. We'll now have an invocation by Chaplain B. Evans. Oh, cha Chaplain, yeah, there you go. Thank chaplain. you. No, we want the light on. There you go. Okay. Father, once again, we come into your throne room just thanking you and praising you, Lord. Thanking you for this wonderful country we live in. Thank you for our great state and especially for our city, Lake Havasu, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you continue to keep your hand on us. And Father, tonight I thank you for those who will be making decisions for the people that you love so much in Lake Havasu, the people who have come just to um, be aware of you, Lord. We thank you for that. Father, will you bless the decisions that are being made today, that their yes will be yes and their no will be no? And we thank you for that. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the city clerk please call the roll? Council members Mark Nixon. Here. Donna McCoy. Here. Jenny Koch. Here. Cal Sheehy. Here. Michelle Lynn. David Lane. Here. Gordon Grote. Here. All right, item five is our initial call to the public. This is where our citizens have an opportunity to address the city council on any matter under the city's jurisdiction. If you do come up, uh, you'll notice that there's a little box to the right of you. Green means go, yellow means you have a minute remaining, and red means five minutes have expired. If you would also state your name and spell your last name for the benefit of the city clerk, I know she would appreciate it. Now, as part of the call to the public, uh, we will listen intently, but under Arizona Open Meeting Law, we will not be able to have an open discussion on it because it is likely not agendized. So if you want to talk about an item that is agendized, please wait for that as opposed to call to the public. So with that, would anybody like to address the council as part of call to the public? All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Would any of the council members like to remove any of the items for separate discussion? Mayor? Yes. Motion? Please. I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second motion, Mr. Mayor. All right, we do have a motion and a second. If you'll, did you, yeah, press your little button? No. Electronic button? There we go. Thank you. All right, uh, I think we're ready to vote. I'm not sure what that's all about, but <laughs> maybe the electronic system's not ready. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you very much. Item seven point or item seven correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager report. First up is the fiscal year 2017-18 grant agency agreements for review and questions. Are there any questions by council? None. Then we will move on to item 7.2, announce vacancies on the Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, there are a number of vacancies on Lake Havasu City Board, Committees, and Commissions. The following is a listing of those vacancies. Airport Advisory Board, one regular pilot member, one alternate pilot member, and one alternate non-pilot member. Board of Adjustment, six regular members, three alternate members. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, one regular member, one student member, and the Public Safety Personnel Retirement System, one regular member. Anyone interested can pick up a packet at City Hall, and they are also available on the city's website. All right, thank you very much. Item 7.3 is our city manager's report. Mr. Cassens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, in code enforcement, as of my last report, code enforcement staff has received 68 new cases, performed 71 primary inspections, 
performed 58 follow-up inspections, sent seven violation notices, and closed 70 cases. And there are currently 57 open cases in code enforcement. In building permits, uh, we've issued 82 residential single-family home permits. That's 19 more than the same time period last year. Uh, we've issued uh, the same number of new commercial building permits as the same period last year at three and performed 1,242 plan reviews. That's uh, 239 more plan reviews than the same time period last year and performed 3,279 building inspections. That's 81 more inspections than the same time period last year. So things are picking up in uh, building. Um, special events coming up, uh, Calvary Life Group Picnic will take place on Wednesday, October 11th at Rotary Park at 4.30. Uh, the 40th Annual Relics and Rods Run to the Sun will take place at the Bridgewater Lynx uh, Golf Course and the North Park Parking Lot at Rotary Park on November 19th through the 21st. And then related to that, of course, is the Relics and Rods Run to the Sun Cruise Night uh, will take place on McCulloch Boulevard from Macoma to Riviera uh, Thursday evening, October 19th from 5 to 8 p.m. That's always very uh, popular. Uh, and in closing, just to give you uh, a heads up on some uh, actions that will be coming for, before you in the next couple of meetings uh, related to debt issuance. And so just to give you the heads up that uh, next week, um, staff will be issuing a request for proposals on a $12.6 million um, financing package um, that will solicit bids from financial institutions uh, in the interest of getting the most competitive in interest rates and terms on that $12.6 million. Um, and uh, then on the 24th at the next council meeting, uh, we'll ask council to approve the prepayment of the 2016 excise, excise tax debt issuance, the debt that we uh, took out to fund the CIP. Uh, we're going to, we're done borrowing from that, so we're gonna pay it off, just like we told you we were gonna do in the beginning. Uh, and also at that meeting, we'll be asking uh, permission to uh, go ahead and pay off a 2008 GADA, the Greater Arizona Development Authority uh, loan that we took out or the debt that we took out uh, to pay for the property on the island side for the bridge landing. Um, it, uh, coming up is the, the, it's callable here pretty soon. There's still about a million and a half or so uh, left on that. Uh, and so it's, it's going to be callable. So if we just pay that off, we can avoid the $150,000 of interest that, would, that we would otherwise have to pay. And um, then on November 9th, the responses uh, to the RFP will be due, and, um, and we will be selecting a, a, a financial institution that has the best terms for the city at that time. And then on November 14th, uh, at the council meeting on the 14th, uh, we'll be coming back uh, with a resolution to authorize uh, the finance director and the uh, city manager to go ahead and execute that, um, that, um, that loan. And um, uh, then on November 28th uh, will be the closing. And then what we'll do with that $12.6 million is we'll, we will pay two full years of the city's contribution to PSPRS. Uh, actually, we'll be We'll be have all, we will have already funded the first year, and then we'll pay ourselves back from the proceeds from, from that bond issuance. So, and of course, all of this is to appease the, um, the expenditure limitation gods uh, in Phoenix, and, um, and hopefully uh, in the uh, primary election in, uh, in the fall of 2018, the voters will um, allow us to uh, uh, update our, our, our base calculation and get the expenditure limitation monkey off our back and we get back to the business of doing things normally. So, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for our city manager? Yes, I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. 
Um, do you have a sense? Uh, um, we've been doing a lot of these financial uh, maneuvers because of expenditure limitations. Do you have a sense of what the ongoing additional cost we've accrued as a city? How much has the carrying costs have been to do all these things? Well, fortunately, the, the cost of borrowing is still very affordable. So our timing is, is good. Uh, I, I should say lucky, maybe. <laughs> but um, th that, of, of course, is not sustainable. That won't last forever. It's not it, this, these maneuvers that we're doing um, to continue doing business as usual uh, and, um, and, and essentially appease uh, expenditure limitation um, is not sustainable because those, those interest rates are going to continue to rise. Now, the cost of issuance, of course, just borrowing the money does have a cost. And, um, you know, Tabitha, maybe you have a better feel for what that the cost of those issuances are. But it, it will be less expensive going forward than it has in the past because uh, we're, we, um, we will be taking on these um, issuances uh, ourselves as opposed to hiring consultants to do it for us. So we'll be avoiding those added extra costs. And I, I think we have the expertise on staff. I know we have the expertise on staff uh, to conduct these transactions on our own now as opposed to paying somebody else to help us do it. So it, what would you guess the, the cost of uh, this $12.6 million issuance, what the added extra cost might be? So under $100,000. Thank you. Other questions? All right, then let's move on to our public hearings portion of the agenda. Item 8.1 is regarding a Series 12 liquor license. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, Nilish Patel has applied for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license for India Spice and Bar located at 460 El Camino Way. All posting requirements have been met, all fees have been paid, and no objections were received. The location is properly zoned for a Series 12 liquor license. All right, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Motion, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I'm going to recommend that the Arizona Department of Liquor Licenses and Control approve a Series 12 liquor license for India Spice and Bar, 460 El Camino Way. All right, we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I think we're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. Item number 8.2, again, is regarding a Series 12 liquor license. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, Jared Edwin Pennington has applied for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license for the Spotted Dog located at 29 Acoma Boulevard South. This application was brought to the city in March of 2017. Since then, the state has granted the city several extensions to allow for the applicant to make payment and fingerprinting. And to date, Mr. Pennington has not filed the required forms or made payment. Therefore, staff is recommending disapproval of this liquor license. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, and by way of background, I actually uh, talked to Mr. Pennington about this, and he indicated that he didn't want to move forward with the application. So disapproving this was not a problem for him. So, However, this is a public hearing, so would anybody like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion. Yes, please. I move to recommend that the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control disapprove a series number 12 liquor license for the Spotted Dog, 29 Acoma Boulevard South. Second. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? We're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. Item 8.3, approve renewal of liability insurance to Willis of Arizona. Sure. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. It's that exciting time of year again. Um, the uh, renewal of our annual or of our liability policy uh, for various coverages throughout the city. 
Uh, we received a favorable quote from our existing carriers, so we aren't making any carrier changes at this time. The uh, quote that was received for uh, all coverage lines was $884,867.90. Uh, this premium includes increased coverage of our cyber liability coverage. Uh, after meeting with our IT division manager and analyzing uh, current exposure trends, we increased our cyber liability coverage and we'll be doing a comprehensive analysis over the next year to come back with some additional coverage options on cyber liability. Um, we received a three-year rate guarantee on our airport liability coverage which uh, reduces the rate and uh, locks it in basically for three years. The overall increase in premium was 4.6%. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions for Shirley? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, can you expand, Shirley, please, on the cyber insurance, what that kind of entails or what we know of it so far? I know there's going to be a, a further study in the coming year to take that further, but what do we have now? Correct. The coverage base that we have now includes, bear with me just a moment, <clears throat> extortion expenses, computer program and electronic data restoration expenses, computer fraud, transfer fraud, telecommunication theft. Those are the lines of coverage within that policy. And those, based on current trends, are the recommended lines of coverage from our broker. And the increase was about fifty grand over last year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? This is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the city council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion, please. I move to direct staff to bind coverage as recommended by Willis of Arizona for a total premium of $884,867.90, payable directly to Willis of Arizona. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. Item 8.4, award bid for the Channel Bollards and Chain Replacement Project to Technology Construction, Inc. Dustin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Bringing to you tonight the uh, Channel Bollard and Chain Replacement Project, project number FA 1090. And this project involves removal and replacement of approximately 700 linear feet of bollards and chains. It is a 90 day contract with a likely duration between October 7 of uh, 2017 and January of 2018. The construction bid was advertised on August 10th, 2017. The bids were opened on September 6, 2017. The apparent low bidder was Technology Construction with a bid of 111,000, which we reduced to 110,000 um, to make the project fit within budget. We adjusted the force account. So that's the difference there. The project limits are from the Chimhueve Indian Tribe Casino Dock to the boat rental shop depicted here. This is the current condition of several of the bollards. They're in very much in need of repair. This is uh, the general condition of several more of them. This is what we're going to replace them with, uh, steel instead of concrete on the exterior, so it should be able to take the wear and tear a lot better. And this is an example of some we've already installed. This is what the finished product will look like along that area. I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Questions from Council? All right, then let me open up the public hearing. Would anybody like to address council on this item? Seeing none, we're going to close the public hearing. Mayor. Yes. Motion. Please. I move to award the bid for the Channel Bollard and Chain Replacement Project to Technology Construction, Inc. in the amount of 110000 
We have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? We are ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you very much. Okay, then we're going to move on to item 8.5, award agreement for professional services for the design of the London Bridge Beach and Rotary Park restroom improvements. Dustin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, I have uh, the next project, the London Bridge Beach and Rotary Park restroom improvements project. This project uh, scope is designed for the rehabilitation and expansion of six restrooms and associated utility upgrades. It's a 90 day contract with likely duration between October of this year and January of next year. Uh, the request for proposal was sent out in May 11th of this year. Uh, the complete scoping was delivered at, uh, on September 13th uh, of this year. And the price for the design of all these restrooms uh, is $59,710. Uh, this is the current condition. You might recognize a few of these places. They're in need of some upgrades and uh, rehabilitation, as you can see. Um, we're going to expand these and make them able to take the, the current capacities that uh, we experience down there in the parks. I'd be happy to take any questions. Um. We had some work done by Jerry Clark at one point in time. How does that, how is this different than some of the work that he did? Mr. Mayor, uh, the, the work that we had done by Jerry Clark, the architect, was for uh, new bathrooms, new okay. public restrooms. And he prepared um, uh, plans, a menu of plans that were similar in footprint but had different design. Uh, that we could use in, in varying places where we need to place new bathrooms. This job is for the rehabilitation and the improvements of existing bathrooms that need attention. Roofs, um, uh, there's some uh, uh, panels that need to be moved to meet ADA, uh, painting. Uh, I think there's uh, one of the bathrooms we're actually adding more stalls. Um, yes, sir. Most of them we're all we're all adding new stalls. Okay. Um, up, okay. up here on the, the screen, this was an assessment, a uh, rough assessment of the uh, uh, needs of the, of the restrooms. And uh, this was at London Bridge Beach. We also have one of these for Rotary as well. Okay. So once once these criteria are prepared under this contract, We'll, we'll come back or we'll do an RFP um, that um, the bidders will actually bid on the brick and mortar piece, the actual construction piece of this job. But this, this sets out the criteria, the design, the plans that will all go into the bid package that the actual um, contractors will bid on ultimately. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from council? Once again, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion? Yes, please. I move to award the agreement for professional services for the London Bridge, Beach, and Rotary Park restroom improvement projects to Shepherd Westminster Incorporated. I'll say. All right, we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from council? We're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, item 8.6, award agreement for professional services for the 2018 tank and booster station improvement to Atkins, Jeremy. Good evening, Mayor, Council. So this project is, um, more or less uh, has to do with our annual tank and booster station rehab. Uh, the overall schedule is we have about a two-month design schedule, and with uh, advertisement and construction, we expect to have uh, the physical work done by the end of this fiscal year. 
uh, the design budget uh, was 240000 and this contract's for 190000 And I just wanted to point out the reason why there's uh, such a, a reduced fee here or expectation and cost is because this year we're actually focusing on rehabbing more tanks than we typically would and not including another booster station um, replacement as part of this year's work. Uh, we have Booster Station 1C, which is still currently under design, and that's a 14-month contract. So we won't even have uh, the plans done until May of this year for that. So we're focusing mainly on the rehab uh, portion of, of this program. So we have uh, five tanks that we're going to inspect and also perform the settlement surveys on. Um, if you remember the change order I brought uh, about a month ago, we actually incorporated the settlement survey at the time of inspection, the initial inspection, um, to help one, save time, reduce the number of times we have to drain the tank, and then we won't have to be looking at a change order during the actual rehab of those tanks. We'll know what the floor condition is before we actually put the, the um, bid documents together. These are the locations of those five tanks that we will be inspecting. Um, the other five tanks within this contract are the ones that we're actually going to be focusing on as far as rehab. Now, these five were from a prior year's inspection effort and um, meet the criteria to have some rehab uh, done. The, the range on, on potential costs from one tank could be as, as small as 80000 up to as high as 800000 depending on the items that have to be addressed at each site. We look at the interior exterior coatings, we look at access, we look at safety, um, we look at the cathodic protection, um, and we'll be addressing and upgrading all those for all five of these locations. Uh, here's just some of the things that were found um, in some of the inspections that we'll address uh, and, and add cost to this rehab. You know, uh, irregular uh, shell contours, so that's the outside steel panels. Those most likely will be removed and, and new steel will be replaced. You can see inside here um, corrosion and coating loss. Well, if we catch that early enough, it's as simple as sandblasting and recoating. Uh, here, here's some issues in, in one of the tanks that we're rehabbing, and this is some corrosion, again, a little bit further corrosion on the steel, but again, with some sandblasting and, and, and some prep uh, and coating, a lot of this can be salvageable. Some of that steel may have to be replaced, but again, that, that's what we'll go through um, in the design process for these rehabs. And these are the five locations of the tanks that are going to be rehabbed in the coming months. And with that, I will answer any questions you might have. Questions for Jeremy. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have questions. Yes. Jeremy, um, can you give me a sense of, I know when we do the, in particular, the floor inspections on this, the standards apply. In this case, I believe it's API or American Petroleum Institute 653. Have you run into any issues with floors in any of the tanks that we've done before? And if so, what, what were those issues like? Okay, yeah, absolutely, we have. And um, just recently, the, the two tanks that are, are currently under rehab contract now, we actually had to go in and remove some of the steel because of the flexure in the steel and the fact that it had failed. So it had bent past the, the point that we're comfortable um, with that steel. And, and if, you know, it, it could cause an immediate, um, let me rephrase that, the potential of that steel to fail um, is intimate, and if we don't replace it, it could fail without any warning. So definitely with those settlement surveys, we are finding areas where we do have extreme settlement, and that's showing us that there's some steel failure. Now, in some tanks where we're just simply visually inspecting and or testing the thickness of the floors, that, that's another inspection that we do. So we do test the thickness of the steel through loss of corrosion over years. Some of these tanks are 40 and 50 years old. So just normal wear and tear, you're losing loss of that steel. And we'll go in there and we'll replace those specific sections with new pieces of steel. We, we try and, and, and stay away from replacing the entire floor if we don't need to. So does that answer your question? 
Uh, it does, and if I may, I, I was just kind of curious. Have you found any um, any geological concerns in terms of our tank placement? In other words, are you seeing that the floor changes or the settling is, is creating a problem because of where we originally placed tanks? It's not easy to move them, but I'm just Right, curious. yeah. Mostly it has nothing to do with the geology. Um, most of the time, the settlement has to do with the way that the outer ring was constructed and if it was compacted properly. So that outer ring, there's an outer ring around these tanks that hold the material within that ring. And if they weren't compacted properly or built properly, then you do have some settlement, and that does create some of that settlement to the, to the uh, tank floor. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Motion, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Um, I will move to award the agreement for professional services for the 2018 tank and booster station improvements project to Atkins. Second. All right, we do have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? Hearing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. Okay, item 8.7, award agreement for professional services for the reuse operational plan to Corello Engineers, Inc. Jeremy. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. So this project before you is actually not budgeted in our CIP. And I'll explain why. And before I do, I'm going to give you kind of a brief history of our, our reclaim system and, and where we're at today. So with the wastewater system expansion program, we've designed and constructed numerous facilities throughout the city to allow us to uh, send all of our reclaimed water to various locations uh, for reuse, whether it's a park or whether it's a golf course. Um, in 2014, we did a water management study that identified what available reclaimed water we have, what we're using it for, and what we could potentially use it for. So we then become better water conscious uh, 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 citizens and, and a better water conscious community and reuse. Again, the goal is to reuse 100% of that reclaimed water. And so over the last few years, we've, we've made upgrades to um, some of our pump stations, we expanded capacity at our, our commingling pond at the Mulberry plant, which allows more storage volume. And we completed what was called package number one that allowed us to, well, that uh, um, incorporated infrastructure for the connection of Rotary Park and London Bridge Beach Park to the reclaim system. Now those parks have not been turned on yet, partly because we needed to finish um, the south intake and also package number two, which is the other half. Now, package number two has been bid and rebid and has since been put on hold. So since this point, staff has had numerous discussions internally about package number two and the complexity of our reclaim system. And we felt that now's, the, now's really the time to kind of take a step back and make sure we understand all the operating scenarios um, of the system before we physically build that last piece and put it into play. So we're proposing to have this, uh, to, to do this, um, create this operational study. And what it really is gonna be is it's gonna be a tool that our operators and our maintenance staff are gonna use. Um, you know, with upcoming retirements, loss of historical knowledge, you know, at any moment, some of these guys that understand the system, you know, could retire or could leave, and, and the guys left holding the key may not necessarily know exactly how this system is ran if they don't have that experience under their belt. So to kind of give you, again, a visual overview of our reclaim system, you can see we have the North plant and, and our island and, and mulberry plants here, and all of them are connected by a, a, a force main. And then all of these parks that we have the ability um, to connect and to irrigate. So this operational plan is actually going to um, 
the, the, the overall contract will take about five months, but we're going to have uh, some of the Corolla engineers that have been involved with, with us and staff over the years more or less shadow all of our maintenance staff. How do they operate? How do they like to operate? How could they operate? And again, identify these standard and non-standard operational um, scenarios, whether it be, you know, winter months, summer months. How we operate in the winter is definitely going to be different from the summer. Uh, where we treat that flow at one plant from another may provide some efficiencies or some cost savings. If we treat it there, we don't have to pump it over here. So we're going to look at all of that. And also, it'll, it'll address and, and give us a, a roadmap if we have an emergency, if there's, an, a break, if there's a break somewhere and we have to get water still to the golf course, how do we accommodate that? Or if we have a wet month and they don't want all that water, what are we going to do with it? How are we going to get it where it needs to be and be able to dispose of it or, and or store it? And then also field verification and workshops. So the engineering staff, the wastewater, and the maintenance uh, services staff are all going to be involved in this process over the next few months creating this plan. So our current budget um, for the, the second package that um, we will be rebidding again, and what's currently in the budget too for the SCADA reclaim system project. And, it, and I wanted to point this out because we're looking at taking some of the funds from the SCADA reclaim system project to fund this operational plan. And what this operational plan will actually do is, one, it will delay that project a little bit, but it will help define the, the core structure of what we want to automate. You know, originally we thought, let's get the nuts and bolts built, we'll manually operate it, figure out how you know, things work and, and what works best, and then we'll automate those various items to reduce the load on staff. Well, that's kind of changed. And our thought is, well, l let's look at the various operational scenarios, work through that, and then once that is defined, this project, the SCADA Reclaim System project, that the, the scope of that may be reduced, and or then we can use those funds incorporate it into the package number two and have all of it built under one contract. So there's a couple different scenarios that we have and we won't know the answer to those until we go through this operational plan effort. And I know that was a lot of information on, on, on this effort, but um, I will answer any questions you might have on this. You know, one of the questions um, I had was, it, it sounded like, the professionals were going to uh, shadow our staff and then kind of document our procedures. But in that vein, will they also be bringing suggestions for, wait a minute, there's a better way of doing this? And Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Because, and that, you make a good point. Sometimes it may seem a little odd that you bring someone into our system that doesn't have the familiarity with it that our own staff does, mm -hmm. but they also have the capability to create that roadmap and find those efficiencies and, you know, close this valve, open this valve, send that flow here, send that flow there, and help, you know, paint a clear picture for our operational staff. That okay. Yes. Um, just for, just to add on to all of that, you know that as Jeremy mentioned, it's it's our goal to use 100% of the effluent that we're producing and not go to the expense of injecting it into the ground and then trying to figure out how we're going to be able to afford to get it back out and get it into the reclaimed system. And as you know, our, our the reclaimed water delivery system is managed completely separate from our drinking water system. Mm -hmm. And at one time, our, our, our effluent delivery system to the golf courses, for the most part, uh, was very simple and um, not very complicated at all and completely separate from our drinking water system. Well, now we've added London Bridge Beach Park. We've added Rotary Park. We're going to add Jack Hardy. We've, we've made these interconnections that will allow us uh, to get reclaimed water into those areas where it hasn't been before. And there's always that. And so that system has become much more complex. And um, we have to make uh, absolutely 
positively sure that there is no potential for a cross connection between the drinking water system and the reclaimed water system and and this will help us make sure that we have accommodated or we have at least acknowledged all of those potential cross connection points and and there are systems in place to ensure that they that never the two come together okay mr mayor if i may yes um Jeremy, I wanted to ask, uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say that I do think the study is a good idea simply because it's pretty obvious that um, the uh, external engineers can act kind of as a lightning rod, but we would also, if we wanted to do that, have to peel people off from their operational duties. Again, that escalates the cost. And it is possible that because we are adding the new parks on, SCADA systems are very expensive. Some of the money that we borrow from the SCADA build out might actually be recouped from deficiencies that we can capture. So I, mean, I think that's great. What I wanted to kind of ask about, and the city manager just touched on that, was uh, the amount of um, or, or where we're going with the additional water overuse, i.e. the excess. What are our plans with that? I mean, is that just all going to get injected at the north site, or what are we going to do with that? Okay, that's a good question. So bringing Rotary Park, London Bridge Beach uh, Park, uh, Cyprus, the ASU fields, and Jack Hardy online, that will consume 100% of our reclaimed water. In addition, because we are currently already providing the golf courses, you know, the London Bridge uh, Golf Course and the Refuge uh, and the Nautical with, with reclaimed water. So bringing those parks online, we will use 100% of our reclaimed water. Uh, for surely in the summer, Hence why we had the upgrades to the south intake to offset some of those shortages um, in, in the hot, hot months. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yeah, Jeremy, can you explain again why didn't we budget for it? Well, uh, it wasn't anticipated. So uh, the current goal was to move forward with package number two and, and construct that and then we would start operating the system and then we would move into looking at how we wanted to automate the system but just simply constructing it and operating it this fills that gap so uh, the concern is well you know engineering we, we design and we'll build this turn it over to our, our maintenance staff how are they going to actually operate it yes we're, we're telling them it's operable but how are they going to physically do that because there are so many different options and the complexity of the system uh, this this creates more comfort and more or less prepares that that roadmap that they can follow. And then also during our conversations with this uh, sewer refinance, we talked about doing an efficiency study. Did we do that already, or did would this now take place of that for the operational efficiencies of of how to run? Um, the utility, if you will. Right. We had we had talked about um, going back mm. and, and doing what um, some of those early proposers, the um, the privatization companies that came in, uh, and each of them was was suggesting that there were operational efficiencies that could be enjoyed and and uh, and and end up in a reduced expense. And yes, we uh, we set out to do that. We had budgeted for it. And um, the budget constraints kind of put it on the back burner. Um, when Andy Astor came on board, he suggested that um, he, you know he would like to give it a try, and um, and came back with some suggestions. Uh, did a, a, a an efficiency study was not a, as comprehensive as as what we had talked about in the beginning, but the budget wouldn't provide for it. It was it was like going to be a hundred and seventy plus thousand dollar. Um, study to be done and unfortunately our our um, our revenues wouldn't support that but but through this process we'll we'll get best practices from not only will they shadow our folks we'll get best practices from them and and any other efficiency opportunities that they may see that we don't see or well when I say efficiency of the system we're, the the focus is on the equipment and 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 how we where we treat and send the flow, not necessarily a staff efficiency point standpoint, but the automation and the, and the upgrades to the SCADA um, that will come in the future will help with that efficiency and will reduce the manpower needed to manually operate the system, allowing them to work on other bigger maintenance projects. And 
Yeah, I, I think also, Council Member, what I remember from some of those proposals, they they had suggested we could see 16 to 20 percent efficiencies, and when we pressed them, it started getting down to well, you know, you got a new system, you're doing this already, you're doing that, you know, maybe we can achieve five to eight percent, and after a while, it's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> So we can probably figure some of this out ourselves. Mr. Mayor and Council Member Sheehy, the, you know, what, what you're talking about on a global scale, yes, will be accomplished with focus on, the, you know, the reclaimed delivery system. But that's just one component of all of the collection, the treatment, the, the op, all the, the operating systems. Yes, we, we do need to do a management efficiency study on our global systems. Uh, when we can afford to do that. But this will accomplish that objective for this piece of the, the big pies. Any other questions? All right, once again, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the council on this matter? Seeing none, we're gonna close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, make a motion. Please. I'll uh, move to award the agreement for professional services for the reuse operational plan to Corolla Engineers Incorporated. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? We're ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. Item 8.8, approve change order number two for the water main replacement <coughs> project with ABC Asphalt LLC. Mr. Abbott. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, so this is really a, uh, I guess you could call it a house cleaning item. Uh, this is change order number two. The first change order uh, for this project uh, dealt with added asphalt replacement that was damaged from the previous uh, water main breaks. And this essentially is a final adjustment of quantities. Uh, typically, you won't see this um, because we're able to um, uh, make this final adjustment within the contract amount. But this actually uh, pushed us over the contract amount. And the combination of change order number one and number two um, equate to about 6%. And city code requires anything over 5% of the total contract to be brought to council for approval. So that is why you're seeing this. Um, the project has reached substantial completion and they are currently working on punch list and project closeout items. So with that, I'll answer any questions you might have. Questions? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Sure. Mr. Abbott, um, I did notice that the change was 6.06% .06 in variance, yeah, but I also noticed that there are some additions and deductions that were kind of different and, you know, maybe you can kind of provide a little information as to as to why to kind of educational piece because I'm just curious okay um, in particular I was looking at um, the deduction of the one inch combination of vacuum air pressure release valve and we changed that six of the one inch to six of the two inch mm -hmm, um, I was trying to brush off the Bernoulli principle but it didn't work can you explain to me why we went from one inch to two inch so actually, the plans called out for two inch. The bid tab called for, for six one inch. So it was really an error in the bid tab. The, the design called for uh, two inch ARVs to be on that main and not as many one inch ARVs. So it's really, a, it was a bid error, a, a quantity error. And because two inch ARVs cost more than the one inch ARV, you, you have that net change. Yeah, uh, I did have another question which was we added two fire hydrant assemblies and then we also added two eight inch gate valves are they kind of one in the same to, to, I don't know yeah yeah with a fire hydrant hydrant assembly you also have a, an isolation valve to take that out of service so yes that requires a gate valve as well okay I, I thought so I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. from you mr. Abbott thank you sir anyone else all right, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we're gonna close the public hearing. Mayor. Yes. Motion. Please. I move to approve change order number two for the water main replacement project with ABC Asphalt, LLC. 
I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? We are ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, in our final public hearing of the night, award bid for the Airport Electric Vault Project to Scenic Electric LLC. Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last but not least is the Airport uh, Electric Vault Project. Uh, the budget uh, for this project was just under half a million dollars, and our low bid came in at 396 325 uh, this is a FAA and ADOT grant funded project, so the city's match is only 4.47% of that 396, uh, which equates to just under $18,000. Um, so Scenic Electric out of um, Mesquite, Nevada, I believe, uh, it's a 60-day project, and we anticipate completion in early January. Uh, just to note, typically we would have a following item for construction management following the uh, award of the construction project, but because this is an FAA funded project, there's extra steps that staff has to follow to get approval. Uh, we also have to have a third party uh, scope uh, review, and that hasn't yet been completed, but when that is done, we will bring that scope uh, to you most likely in early November. Uh, so this project is to replace and upgrade uh, mainly the electrical building and the electrical equipment at the airport along with a new generator. Uh, all of this electrical equipment is approaching 30 years of age and has reached, more than reached, its useful life. Um, we will also be pulling new wire uh, to the um, taxiway lighting and upgrading the pilot control systems uh, within the airport. And with that, I will answer any questions you may have. Questions? All right, last chance for a public hearing. Would anybody like to address council on this item? Seeing none, we're gonna close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion? Yes, please. I move to award the bid for the Airport Electrical Vault Project to Scenic Electric LLC in the amount of $396,325. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? We are ready to vote. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you. All right, current events. Are there any council committee reports? Nobody? Okay. Item 10, our final call to the public. Would anybody like to address the City Council? Seeing none, future meetings. Tuesday, October 24, 2017, at 6 p.m., we will have a regular meeting. And then on Tuesday, November 14, 2017, at 6 p.m., we will also have a regular meeting. Any future agenda items from Council? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? All right, we have a motion and a second. Unless there's an objection, we are adjourned. Thank you all for being here.